It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to... The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report. It's time to get back into some Superman and Lois. And that's what I'm saying. But it's been too long, and I'm about to start rapping. <laughs> but with me is always Mr. James Cole, the Superman of Red, the Man of Steel, the muscles upon muscles. <sighs> <laughs> He's like, yep. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> What's that's up? funny. How's it going? Pat? Every time we record and look, it does this. It does this countdown thing. <clears throat> it's like three, two, one. I always think about on Wayne's World where they're like in five, four, and then they're like doing the head nod. <laughs> Don't uh, count. So you can still see your mouth moving. <laughs> hey guys, don't nod your head. <laughs> Uh, good, good times, good films. So let's, let's we're going to jump into it. But I was going to point out here, um, as of this recording, if you go to dailyplanetdc.com, I have an article published on the Daily Planet. It's pretty sweet. Go check that out. Also, I'm very proud of my daughter. We were at this store, like this discount store called Gabe's, and they had Halloween costumes out, and they were like four bucks. And I was like, a new costume. Uh, and Sayla got herself a new Supergirl costume. So, proud of my daughter. Solomon had yeah, very cute the three costume. choices he had real quick. Very good. He had, <laughs> it is. Solomon had Robin from Teen Titans Go, which I can understand why you wouldn't choose that one because it is very anime. Like, it's not just a Robin costume. Um, the other one they had was Han Solo. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> this will be so cool. It's an act, like it's legit Han Solo. What's he pick? Stormtrooper. <laughs> I'm like, all right, buddy. I'll let you do your thing. So That's funny. All right, we're going to jump into this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> right. So here we go. Are you... Ready. That's Superman and Lois say it like that, it's... through the valley of. Sorry, when you say it like that, I just heard the, corn, the beginning of the horn song. Are you ready? Exactly. That's, that's exactly my thought. So. James, you ready to talk about some Superman and Lois again? Feels like we haven't talked in forever. So we're jumping into episode 12, Through the Valley of Death. Does that sound fun? Hey, hey! Misty! So, I don't. let's. <clears throat> so, this episode starts, it pretty much picks up where the last one left off. And the last one le- leaving off is where Superman basically tells Tal that he will submit to whatever oh. to just protect his family. And Lois called John. Now, we see John, John Irons, a lot of Johns going on here, at the Metropolis University where his younger Earth Prime sister is. And, you know, my, the first big question raised was, if he's going to see his sister of this Earth, where this John Irons has been dead, you know what? Here, here you go. Okay? Ready, James? Undercover military operation faked my death. Recruited to fight aliens. 
had a had a issue, was in recovery, some some memory damage. Boom, he's brought back to life. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but that's when that's the part that lines up when Lois calls, right? And then we see Tao showing Superman pain, and my the way they show like. Superman being like shot down with like the red energy. They also show flashbacks of Tao. And part of me wondered if Tao was even Tao. <laughs> you know, like if he was a consciousness or not. Just just a thought. I know. Like, wouldn't that be a wouldn't that be a sh- A Shyamalan twist. Yeah, but that was all told from him. It's, Maybe he doesn't even realize he's a conscious. Well, I don't know. I mean, they did have the... Wouldn't that be a what? Just saying. Could be a, could be a oh, big... Oh, right. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't think we're getting that much. But uh, you know, we did get him landing on who Earth. And who knows? But having what's abilities interesting is stuff, so. the consciousness that they're trying to place inside of Superman. And who might that be, James? Right, General Zod. Well. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? This is so. This is our first post-crisis mention of Zod. So it makes me wonder if Clark has fought Zod before or not. Zod, we've not had any any trying to implant right? him, General Zod. Right? How many how, how many different ways can we have Zod? You know what I mean? Like, uh, like Zod is almost uh, almost immortal with his different forms. He's got his, uh, he's got his clone right. bodies. And he's got I will his, say, this depending is, on his we're, we're, interpretation, he's got his phantom phantom zone. I will say that I his like physical that body Zod in the phantom zone, or um, once we are presented, his with consciousness the idea of Zod. resides. <laughs> in uh, quickly, in the Eradicator, and, and Zod is extinguished. So, like, so we don't have it's to. It's just deal with another Zod version of Zod from so another like time in his life. Used. You know, I think the thing about Zod was always the idea of just the evil Kryptonian. You know, the evil Superman almost, and we don't have to have Zod to have Zod. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tao, Tao is like Zod with a twist. You know, we, we did Jarell and Zod as brothers. Now we're giving this new character uh, as Clark's brother. So, Right. I, I, just about anybody they, anybody they bring up as an evil Kryptonian, basically, they just like always just rip off Zod. Yeah. Yeah, he's Yeah. He's a um Yeah. Zod is just the seminal evil Kryptonian. And you know yeah, what? Considering considering the past and the out. Phantom Zone, there were probably more seminal Kryptonians who've been locked Hold in on one second, I grab for, something for, the for a long time. Side Zod. Wait a minute. Uh, all the criminals there. So many different criminals that could be used as as Superman folks.
I love my kids, but sometimes they's dumb. All right, ready? So let's, let's, let's talk a moment about Sam Lane. Now, Sam tries to be slick and find out where the fortress is. He's like, you know that place that he has, Lois? Do you think he could be there? Maybe well, the location, she's like, no. No, Something. he's not there. No. <laughs> slick son of a bitch. <laughs> Um, but man, um, the DOD just, they're, I, it kills me because this episode is so much like, we have to stop Superman. There's like no mention of, we have to stop edge. It's, you know, it's like <laughs> now that Superman's been compromised or whatever, they like, well, now we've lost all hope. Right. I mean, I'm glad that, I mean, that's the way that some are acting. Like, Superman's compromised. He's gone. Mm -hmm. He's lost two less. Um, I do yeah. like how Lois and the boys, obviously, they yeah. want, want their husband and father back. Um, exactly. But he, uh, um, I, I like no, how she's the only one who's with like, the in this episode. if we use that now, we have nothing Kyle against Edge. Not come nothing work. against anybody. The town is blaming Kyle. You know, except for 7-7. Seven, seven. I'm just going to kind of ride the Cushings out for a second here. Just kind of uh, like the whole You know, his, they, they ask him not to come back to work. He runs into some of his fellow firefighters at the the diner. And... You know, they're being blamed. And so they they vandalize their house. They um you know, Lana is rejected by Emily after Lana even told Emily not to pursue the job with Edge. But just because Lana worked for Edge and Kyle was trying to champion Edge for the town. Everybody has turned against him. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, we've we've said in the past about them giving so much focus to Lana and her family, um, but now it it absolutely makes sense right. why they I mean, why they have like, so much focus. These people know us. We grew up here, being close you know, to Edge and uh, stuff. And Kyle, you know, says let's start some, looking for jobs or whatever. Causes some more problems you know, um, in nearby towns, and you know. Brings out some shady two-faced people as well as, you know, like people looking for somebody to blame. And the only tangible person they have to blame is, All right. is Kyle. I just want to hit on the cushions real quick. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even... To nearby towns. No, no, you're, you're. I'm, I'm checking my notes here because my notes are written in order. But uh, it was a good story. It was, it was a good bit for because the, in this episode, episode because it, it even, it, it gave Lois some other stuff to do. Um. Yeah, it's also where uh. Lois or talks am I just to them blending both episodes together because she know. she gets you know, <laughs> Kyle talks about being taken over and possessed 
what that felt like so that she uses that to try to talk to John Henry and her father. Cause I know, I know this episode back. for sure is the episode where their house and vandalized. Also where, um, Yeah. See, this is mm-hmm. this, this is kind of the problem here where, where I'm running into right now talking about it is this this so show we'll, we'll is to is told so well me. that the um, the story you know, Lana talks is to like seamless from today, episode to, to episode. So, I think some of the points uh, from the next Lana, episode you know, I'm talks to just Lana carrying over from it was like the, the plot and bits of this that, episode. That distinction like we talked about where Lana was the open and willing we, to that be we taken ha- over. That we haven't talked so about her experience because was we were different so than busy. what Kyle's was. And it's the information that Kyle gives to Lois that, like I said, helps her, you know, try to get Sam and John on her side about saving Superman. Now, I hope that Superman will show up into town and thank Kyle for helping save his life. So we have just kind of skidding back of the town for treating Kyle the way they are. Um, so John Iron, yeah, John is really set on killing Superman. You know, he's basically like, why else would Superman, you know, signal you to bring me in to help if he knew that there was no other chance to, but for me to kill him. And I'm like, wow, I feel like we're right back where we left off, John. Um, And John tells a little bit about his story, okay? About that would the be really solar good. solar tech he had and how he was trying to use it. And it was during that time is when he was brought to this earth. So it makes me wonder, is this John Irons a product of crisis or not? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, just we get the shot of him using the the red solar bomb, and, exactly. so and he's flying into it, and Superman just kind of <laughs> uh, uh, drops uh, off his ship. Don't know if it's because the effect of the solar bomb, see if it worked or anything. But as he's flying into it, he seems to hit a worm that brings him to Earth to this. It's hard to tell with the red solar bomb and yeah. the red skies Ex- and things from from crisis to see to know what what that's my head cannon. Maybe what he was maybe he was that fighting the head moment head. crisis came to uh, came to his earth and and the bomb um, and crisis. Yeah, uh, and I, they're, they're kind writing of it that way gave him a, a uh, wormhole we'll way to that here in a second. <laughs> you know what um, I mean? So. Way to they escape and a way to, to so who do they transport ca- they to another contact to the prime earth. Argus. And who shows up from Argus? That's probably Diggle. Yeah. This is another probably Diggle, the best way to go about it. Another Diggle crossover, which is kind of vague. I will say I was a little disappointed that Diggle wasn't more active in this episode. Um, you know, because he shows up, he sees Lois, he recognizes Lois, he talks to Lois, you know, having had a pass with Lois and he's like, Oh, this is where you guys move to. Cause of course Diggle moved to Metropolis. Did John Diggle. Uh, Lila is still running Argus. And then during the conversation, Diggle, you know, basically was lied to as why, uh, what do you call it? While he was there, and he starts arguing with Sam. 
Then he finds out John's from another earth. And he's like, this guy's from another earth? We got to talk. Um, but he mentions Oliver. You know? And I'm just like, ah, once again, where, when is this show taking place? <laughs> like, um, why, why is there no super girl? Why is there no Supergirl reference? <clears throat> oh, it's 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 post crisis. It's post crisis, but it's just is this show taking place after Supergirl? You know, so that's that's kind of my working principle of thought is the events of Supergirl are happened, and in this show, like, well, it's got to be. I just feel like got to be because none, none of the other shows have right. Really it's got to be post crisis though. You know, right. got the there's been Oliver hits about the other shows. And... But anyways, um... right. And then recasting Kate Kane and just throwing that story away and not making any dang sense and just. I really feel like the writer's room for Batwoman is just a mess. There's no, I thought like there's no leadership, like yeah. there's no direct path. Well, just, you know, oh, we would have expected to see it from Batwoman, but, if not for, I'm not trying to criticize, you I'm know, saying, them making uh, Ryan, Ryan Wilder instead of just casting Kate Kane. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it, it just put a it just put a big wedge in, in the Batwoman stories themselves, mm-hmm. but then the the overall um, uh, uh, impact that Batwoman has had and and gotten from the yeah. the rest of the era. Uh, uh, Like by doing what they did, they just took away every tangible exactly. connection they ever had it, to it, the you, Arrowverse. You took it too prior. far. Instead of just recasting and continuing the story thread you had, because we all would have adapted with that. Like I said, like I said um, from the beginning, they should have they should have just, just recast off on the rails. Kane as well as they and in the it, beginning. I said I said that back when it was when before they before they created Ryan, Ryan Wilder. Oh yeah, they did two. They did two seasons exactly. in a row of um, the the character of Batwoman learning she has to be Batwoman. So, and it just it just yeah, going we won't going the freaking hole. Batman forever. It also made Alice there. almost unimportant. Except and a very except Bat, except that's who you are right, kind of we'll thing. Keep moving on. And so, they had to do it two years in a row. Did it with B Rose in season one, then they had to do it again with Ryan Wilder in season two. They did. They did the same thing two seasons in a row. I mean, that's that's basically what they did, right, Mukite? Yep. Um. So, well, characters we haven't talked about because I was saving them is so John John Kent. Yeah, is really the unsung. Hero you wonder. You wonder if the, if they lost it, they were just like, okay, he well, since we lost her, how can we make like this his mom character and like his even dad. more? Inclusive? How can we make okay. this character even and more I say representative? That because He's the one that like talks to his brother Jordan, who's having a breakthrough <laughs> breakdown because he couldn't stop Edge. He's like, I gave him everything I had, and I couldn't stop him. And it's John who helps talk with Jordan to get him to start using his hearing. When Clark is able to break out of the evil desert fortress for a moment, he yells for Jordan, and Jordan's able to hear him. And then, skipping ahead. Lois tells John that she's married to Superman, that Superman is Clark Kent. And I love John's like, Superman is Clark Kent? <laughs> it's like, yep, <laughs> it worked, <laughs> you know? Um, and it was awesome, you know, in that scene. And, you know, you can tell, like, John, that's where John first starts getting some con- conflict. And then John Kent... A little bit walks in and talks to John Iron and says, 
you know, talks about when his van was parked at their house. You know, he, he watched the video <laughs> with his daughter. He said, you seem like a really good dad. And the guy you're about to kill, he's a really good dad, too. There's always another way. And I'm like, you know, thinking about this character, like John Kent, who has no power yet. <laughs> you know, he's given his grandpa the speech. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I think eventually he, something. Like I said before, I think he's going to get something like speed or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Maybe not. You know, it could be a crisis based story where the, you know, the idea that the one entity child they had was technically split into two people. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then we have where we have Superman versus what I have as Halo Steel. Right. He's he's proto steel. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's the idea that they didn't want to make it look too much like steel, so we would know off the bat. He but it gives steel. us somewhere to move <laughs> the costume to. Like, I, my my, hopefully, I mean, pretty much. I mean, that's what that's what this character has been since its inception. It's it's uh, he's he's um uh. uh Master Chief. So we have Steel flying to fight Superman. And it's a good fight. You know, it, there's tension with just how they're fighting. That John is there. He has the weapon. Lois can hear. Um, and it's a good fight. But what I love is, you know, Sam's like, you, Superman is compromised. You're authorized to engage. And... Uh, John Henry, you know, hears Clark basically tell him, do it. And when Clark's telling him to do it, I feel like that's what causes John Henry to kind of snap because then he gives him the speech about pain and fighting back for his family. And, um, you know, he takes the mask down so he can see his face. And it's a really good scene, you know? And then, of course, what do you call it? Um, it's awesome just to see that, like you know, him get rid of Zod, and that's it. We didn't get a, an episode of Evil Superman, you know. We didn't get, uh, you know, this drawn out story of him being possessed. And even then, he was never fully possessed. He was always fighting it, and I was very happy about that. It was, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, the the amount of damage, especially when he says that, you know, in the past he said that, um, uh this episode that he said it took him seven minutes to destroy metropolis like that's a lot of power that's giving this superman a lot of power um so if you try to do a drag out story it's like it's like you're just you're just making him talk for the sake of talk so he can't so he so i'm glad they didn't play around with it So it's just really awesome to finally see John Henry and Superman work together. Um, we see Edge fly into space and basically do a flare. And he's put in prison, you know. And that's how the episode ends. Uh, it ends, though, with a really cool scene of Superman showing up on the farm. And he doesn't even change back to Clark. He just shows up and he's hugging his family. And then John shows up and they have a nice conversation. And uh, it was really good. I like, I like seeing them work together. But, so that was episode 12, In the Valley of Death. What do you think, James? Um, I mean, I enjoyed the episode. I didn't waste any time. I fought back against Possession time. Super act. Pretty good in this show. 
I've come back to the both of them come back to the farm all suited up. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes it was. It's a good farm. It's a good farm. Yeah. So I like how yeah. I like how um Jordan was like Jordan heard him coming first. Yes. Yes he did. So he's dead. <laughs> yep. So it was cool. I, I really dug it. And I, I'm sad when this show wraps, you know, and we, we, we have to wait, you know, for the next season, but all right, we got another episode to review coming up soon. So remember everyone, look up in the sky. If you want to help out this show and any other show on Southgate Media Group, and you really don't have the extra money to do so, check this out. Go to SouthgateMediaGroup.com. At the top, there's a link to Amazon. Click that, log into your Amazon, shop and buy like normal. And part of the money that you spend comes back to us to help us with our podcast. Hello, everybody. I just want to let you know that Southgate Media Group has its own Patreon. That's right. For $5 a month, you can get exclusive shows, content, and interviews with the different podcasters of the network. This Week in Geek is a Patreon-exclusive only series. So check it out. Go www.patreon.com slash Southgate Media Group. We are always adding new content. If you're like me and you love listening to different podcasts about Superman, I have a few that I want you to check out. Some of my favorites are The Last Sons of Krypton. Connor and Ray are always reviewing different books, and it's really nice and refreshing to kind of dig back into older stuff. The aspiring Kryptonian, Tasman and her team are always finding interesting people to interview. Digging for Kryptonite has become one of my favorite ones to listen to as Anthony digs into different errors of the character. There's always the Always Hold On to Smallville, which I've guessed it on before, if you're wanting to step back into that nostalgia realm. So check out all these, and there are many, many more. So check out our Twitter, because we're constantly finding new podcasts that inspire and bring hope to everyone around. The Krypton Report is part of the Southgate Media Group network of podcasts. If you have an interest, check out Southgate Media Group to see if your podcast is there. I bet it is. At the Southgate Media Group website, you can sign up for our newsletter. You'll... Get info on all the shows, and you can find what you want. You'll also find links to our sponsors, where you can get great products and support the podcast. Also, our book, Pod Life, Podcasting Stories. It's a great book. Check it out. It's nice to hear where people come from and why they do what they do. And remember. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.